All right, there will be bourbon is not tonight. So I don't know why I said that. It's actually there will be banter. And we have someone filling in for the lovable gun-toting liberal who is not with us tonight, but will return probably in a few weeks because we're not doing this on Thanksgiving. Uh, you guys can banter with your families. So uh, let's first bring in Christina Wong, the decent civilian reporter. How are you, ma'am? Doing well. Doing, Doing well. well. Alleges to be drinking bourbon, but to me, if she shows the glass again, it looks like an iceberg. So there's a lot of bourbon in there. Peach mm -hmm. flavored. No, not peach oh, flavored. Uh, that's not bourbon then. Blood flavored. How do you not know what flavor it is that you're drinking? Because <laughs> she's had a lot of it already. There's, there, there's either peach or there's no. Okay, anyway. And then, and then now, let us slide on over to the wonderful piece of Australian eye candy. Ben, how are you? Ben Bridges, right? Ben Bridge. Ben Bridge. One just, no just, yeah. just as my uh, as my grandfather would say, Bridge is English. Bridges is Irish. You get very upset about having an extra S thrown on, on at the end of the name, but I'm good. I'm happy to be back for a second week. Uh, so uh, hopefully, I can I can get another comment on YouTube like last week. <laughs> well, let's hope. Let's, hey, they, all that proves is someone watched it. Right? <laughs> and now, yeah. uh, uh, filling in is the wonderful Fox News staple america's favorite riot reporter julio rosas how are you sir well i'm not at a riot so i'm quite upset i was gonna say he's probably not not very uh you're out of your comfort zone yeah it's weird well, welcome well thanks for having me <laughs> a man of so many words he's really just good at taking uh, rubber projectiles into the chest and surviving them How's that, how's that wound looking anyway these days? You haven't showed us in a while. Yeah, because you don't need to see it. It, it, it looks, no, it just looks the same from when I like last showed you guys. So it's like not going away. Ago. No, it's a permanent, it's a scar. Like it's, I just have a scar there now. You got workman's like, comp for this stuff? Uh, well, no, yeah. no, because I still worked. I, I'm not, I'm not a wimp. I still worked even though I, oh, I, I still, I, I'm not saying that after I got hit, I didn't keep working because I had a Fox News hit in like an hour, but that was a strong reason for why I kept working. <laughs> That's a, plus, I mean, after an hour, you, you're not really feeling it yet. You're still all hyped up off your adrenaline and all. No, I still very. I it was still hurting a okay, lot. Well, it was still yeah that 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 whole night. I was trying to hype you up, but um, and I don't know what's going on with your connection over there, Julio. But look. You need to fix it at some point. Well, let, uh, let me like, hold on. Let me. No, we're already committed. You can't. You, you're just gonna have to deal with it at this point. <laughs> I'm just saying, going forward, <laughs> you could fix that. But no, you're fine. Uh, so as I uh, I sent that out earlier, I uh, wanted to kind of talk about tonight the pending vaccine that we have going on and getting ready to kind of make its rounds into the United States and other parts in the country or in the world. And I sent out something earlier and this really kind of, kind of stuck with me because I think there's a lot of issues that will arise as we get into the actual distribution point of it. But so far, you know, you got, you got Pfizer and you got, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's either Moderna or Moderna. Does anyone know? I think it's Moderna. Okay. So these are the two competing companies kind of that they both got a vaccine coming, coming on. They've, been, they've recently reported their efficacy portion of their trials and they're right around 95% in terms of prevention of cases. And none of them report any safety concerns uh, before we get into the actual amount that they will supply by the end of this year and the end of next year, just on the surface, where do you guys come out on this vaccine in general? Because, you know, there's a lot of people with varying emotions and feelings on vaccine vaccines, especially those, you know, which will be mandated by the government. But uh, Christina, what, what's your take on what you've been seeing with this? Uh, so I, I, when I tweeted stuff about a vaccine, it makes people really upset. Um, I think because, uh, you know, of, of what they know or what they already think about vaccines. Um, so I, I, I'm a little surprised by that. I mean, I understand to each their own. Um, I personally, uh, am looking forward to having the vaccine. Um, really? my parents, 
Oh, I mean, not me personally, but <laughs> <laughs> I want other people to have vaccine gotcha. if they should want it. Um, so my parents, right? I, I want them to have the vaccine. I think they will take the vaccine. Um, for me, I don't have anything against it. You know, I get the flu shot. Uh, I, I take vaccines when I go overseas, you know, for like malaria and all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff. Um, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's not a priority for me. It would be a priority for me to take so I won't infect my parents, you know? So I, I don't have any strong feelings of, oh, I'm not going to take this vaccine um, or, you know, or I need to have it either way. Gotcha. All right. So Julio, you're kind of in the same boat as me to not really get into the other stuff that you do when you're not chasing a riot, but uh, we already know how this is going to go for us. We're going to get it. So are you, are you going to try and get out based off religious preference or are you going to find a loophole or are you just, Hey, it's another vaccine. Let's just get it and get it over. Well, with. My, it depends what, how the, the rollout is or the timeline of the rollout uh, just because technically my contract is up in May. Oh, getting so out. I, I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out of my way to get <laughs> it just because I'm in the less, you know, risk group. Mm -hmm. uh in terms of not to say uh, you know i don't want to downplay it or anything but i mean i i've been in crowds consistently since yes. since may <laughs> and all probability i did probably contract it at some point i just uh, i mean it's just based on numbers and probability and what mm -hmm. whatnot um but so for, for sure the military is going to mandate it it's going it, to the the you know, hundreds of other shots <laughs> that were required yeah. to take um so i don't i mean if i if i have to get it while i'm still in then okay fine but uh there there is a chance that just based on when i drop to the irr that um i might not be have to take it just depends on what the, the timeline of the rollout is dragon okay uh and ben so what are you thinking? Because uh, the follow-up to you, Ben, is after you tell me how your thoughts on this, I want to get into kind of the rollout and what the, the distribution plan is and have you touch base on that, given, you know, your country of origin. But just before we get to that, though, what, what are you, what's your take on it? On this vaccine or vaccines in general? This one. Okay. Um, I, I'm interested to see how quickly the U.S. particularly is, is getting after stage three trials in the rollout. Um, so my stats at the moment says that there's about 54 vaccines currently in clinical trials with humans. And, it, you know, both of the most promising being the Pfizer and the Medina vaccines are, are claiming 95, 94% um, <clears throat> effective rates, which is great. Um, so, you know, anything that can start to provide that level of herd immunity to the population is going to be a good thing because if herd immunity is achieved and the last time I looked into this, if they were talking, if people continue to do a bit of social distancing and wear masks, then they just need to get to a rate of about 50%, whereas initially they were thinking they needed a hit sort of 85. So if they can get 50% of the population um, either vaccinated or with a positive test of the antibodies, it means that things can go back to largely business as usual. So, yeah. you know, everything reopens, people can go back and, you know, what Christina's about to do, obviously heading out to you know, a nightclub <laughs> later on tonight. She's, <laughs> she's ready to go get a groove on. Yeah. Very um, comfortable shirt. Very comfortable home shirt. Hey, you know? it, 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 it looks like you're going out. Your hair's done. It does. So like I, don't, I, don't, so I don't believe that you're going out. Is there some <laughs> underground DC party you're covering that we exactly. don't know Exactly. Some, some kind of speakeasy. But no, that, you know, having, having vaccines widely available um, as soon as safely possible, I think, is a great thing. Okay. And so then that's my, this kind of leads me to my next point. So Pfizer and Moderna, uh, they said by the end of this year, they can produce up to 50 million doses which it is a two dose uh, cycle or sequence of this three weeks apart, right? So 50 million, there you go. You cut that in half, you got 25 million. And we, and we kind of see how these numbers start to come down. Uh, Moderna says they can produce about 20 million in the same time frame. By the end of next year in 2021, 
Pfizer expects to manufacture about 1.3 billion, while Moderna will make between 500 million and 1 billion. Both companies have already contractually agreed to provide 100 million doses to the United States each. So that brings me to Ben. Here's what I'm concerned with. So uh, we can do the math on the United States, 100 million, give or take, right, and the population. Uh, how this is going to get prioritized in terms of distribution, right? From everything I've been able to read up to this point, it's going to be up to state governments how that gets done. Um, you know, rural populations, they may or may not take priority because they're less likely to get it based off of just where they live and exposure, right? And density of populations. But how does Australia factor into this, for example? Like, where, wh have you been following anything in your country in terms of where they are in terms of procuring any of these, these vaccines through these companies or... or where do, you, where, where, should, where do you kind of come out on that? Uh, so Australia is actually doing its own clinical research. My sister is okay. part of a stage stage oh, cool. two trial at the moment. So we're not leaving our fate in the hands of big pharma here in the US or Europe. Uh, so, you know, Australia is a pretty smart country. Uh, so we have our own uh, scientists working on um, a vaccine. And a lot of these vaccines are, you know, there's only three styles of vaccine that are being researched at the moment you know that that and the only one that's of any real interest is the fact that the pfizer and i think the moderna are both working on messenger rna which has never been used before in a, a vaccine that's been approved by the fda or anywhere else in the world so but the rest of them are working on proven vaccine technology that they've springboarded off some sars 2 trials they already had done as i understand it mm. so australia can produce its own to a degree or it could also jump on board and and sign a deal um, with the two major pharmaceutical companies right. to try and and try and buy stock and i think australia would probably take the similar approach that you know essential services military type folks would get it first and then they look at trying to make sure they're hitting the major population centres to get that herd immunity before they then would roll it out more broadly because, you know, there's there's parts of Australia that, you know, you don't see another human being for days, weeks, months if you don't want to. So, you know, th those folks don't need to have the vaccine straight away, but people living in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, you know, where there's millions of folks living in relatively uh, close close confines or as close as New York City, but, you know, it's still a big city. And I feel like that's going to be uh, the, the first option for people to get vaccinated. And, Julio, you know, that, that link you sent out this morning about the South yeah. Australian government locking down, you know, They're once again in, 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 the, um, in this, in this uh, millennium, the country still has the capacity to put a hard border between our states because, you know, there's not enough people to really you know, be getting around it. So there would be an option for the federal government to take a state-by-state -state approach based on density, economics, ease of rollout, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so, so Julio, in terms of covering the riots, do you think people who go to a riot should be vaccinated before they start throwing the first Molotov or where are you at on that? Well well, I think honestly, I mean, everyone's talking about the you know COVID nineteen vaccine. And I'm just wondering when the vaccine for TDS is going to come out. But <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think necessarily uh, going to be necessary anymore, just because uh, it looks like Trump's going to be his way out of office. Yeah, uh, but you no, know, it, 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 look, I mean, as I said before. I mean, even vaccine. the people, even the people that do go to protests and, and riots in general, they're of the younger type. They're of the demographic that will most, if they do contract it, they will be okay. Um, obviously, there are severe, severe cases when it comes to just different types of people. But I mean, it, it's it's fine. It's it's whatever. But I think that if if they are going to continue this then I, I, and i think they would be of the same type of people who who would get the vaccine um but then again you have these you have these people that it was like well it came from the trump administration so you can't trust it um you have governor cuomo doing his doing his whole thing like we we might stop the distribution if it doesn't meet our standards of of whatever 
and we got our own panel to research it and okay fine but i i think that's just more of a of a power grab again yeah. that he can do it because he can because oh it's covid and i can do more things than not and so but i mean i to go to your first question i mean if if they are gonna get to your gathering in these groups and 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 do what they want to do all right fine but then you know yeah maybe you should get the vaccine <laughs> um, but my 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 whole thing is my whole thing is, is that if if they can go out and gather to protest and riot, then I can go be with my family for Thanksgiving. Bam, it's, nailed it's it. Kinda, just it's just kind of that simple. Um, and yep. it, 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 it it doesn't. You can you vote know, in person. You can you can hang out for Thanksgiving. Well, right, and like it's different because obviously I'm with my immediate family, not with right. hundreds or thousands of other just complete strangers and passing around a bottle of champagne because Biden won the election. <laughs> Christina, so um, one thing I did like is that from what I've read also is that they're, they're contracting with like UPS and FedEx, you know, our actual civilian logistics and distribution networks to kind of help with the distribution of the vaccine. I think that's actually pretty cool. And kind of to touch on what Julio said, yeah, I think there's always going to be some sort of, oh, this came from the Trump administration. But I actually... And I'm curious what your take is on this. I feel like when we finally do, you know, maybe the inevitable inauguration of the current president-elect Joe Biden, uh, a lot of this campaigning shit that's still going on will sort of cease. And I think you would hear kind of praise come from a Biden presidency for Trump and his administration's work on this vaccine. Do you think that's true? Or are you just kind of like, no, nah, it's never going to get back to some sort of level of civility? Ben's not liking it either. But what do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think you start to see folks, uh, jokingly or not, sort of uh, from, you know, pro-Biden folks sort of give credit to Biden for the Pfizer vaccine. Um, and so you, immediately you had, Paul, I mean, you had Scaramucci, uh, who tweeted, um, I think he said something like, thank you so much, President-elect Biden or something. And uh, I think he was joking, but that really rankled some people. But you also have the Biden transition team, um, Michael Osterholm, he was everywhere on the news, um, on cable uh, news shows, just, you know, blasting Trump and his response. And, you know, surprise, he's on the Biden transition team. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, I think that's a little unethical to spend one whole year just, you know, talking about how terrible Trump's response is, and then you end up with a job with the new administration. Anyway, so he's, right now you see with the political fight, you see the Biden folks saying people are going to die if President Trump doesn't give us permission to talk to the folks in government. Well, that might have some merit. I don't know, but yeah. the fact that it's been, you know, uh, I, I don't trust that the Biden team is, is you know, I, I think they just want to push, you know, Trump towards the door. Of course, he is not, uh, he has not conceded yet. Oh, I mean, we'll see what happens in, you know, a matter of weeks here. Um, but, but yeah, no, I don't see, I don't see the Biden administration giving, uh, you know, Trump any credit and, and he should. I mean, Operation Warp Speed has been extremely yep. successful. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you have a lot of talk of, oh, you know, Trump's no longer, you know, he's, he's, he, he no longer cares about people, uh, you know, getting the vaccine. He's no longer, you know, being a president. He doesn't care that coronavirus cases are surging. But you had a very good briefing today. You had, you know, Dr. Fauci, uh, you have someone people trust, you had Dr. Burks, uh, you had Vice President Pence, who is very, very competent, just kind of going over everything that's going to happen. And, you know, we have six other vaccine candidates or, or four other vaccine candidates other than, um, you know, the uh, Pfizer and Moderna. Um, they're looking at, you know, distribution, like you said, mm. um, they've ramped up, you know, all the supplies needed to, in, or, in order to distribute the vaccine. They say, I think the first vaccine dosages are gonna go out within 24 hours after they get uh, emergency authorization, right. mer emergency use yeah. authorization or EUA. From the FDA. So, um, yeah. yeah, so unfortunately I think, you know, if, 
I shouldn't say, unfortunately, we should get the vaccine as soon as possible. But I I think, unfortunately, you're you're going to see politics throughout uh, this whole thing. And you're going to if we do recover, there's not going to be any any credit given to the Trump administration. Interesting. Okay. well, so then that's what leads me into kind of the next thing is uh, the political angle of it. And, you know, I sent out that thing about certain governments, uh, particularly in India and South Africa, they've asked the World Trade Organization to waive some provisions in a trade agreement, which governs intellectual property rights so that medical products can be more easily accessed. And Ben, I know you touched on something before we started going here on this recording issue, but um, what was your takeaway and how did you say it kind of tied into something with as relates to intellectual property in World War II? Uh, well, I mean, to be cheeky, all they need to do is ask China. <laughs> just, just India and South Africa just ask China. They've probably already stolen all of the information that those biotech companies have on the vaccine anyway. So, you know, just roll over to Beijing and get the plans you're good to go would be my obvious answer, but I digress. Right. Um, this might get get us cancelled like South Park, but I apologise for that. Nah, um, we're, the, we're the, fucking, we're going. <laughs> the, 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 the point that I thought was interesting after reading that article is it jogged something in my memory about um, the the Jeep of World War Two. So that um, was part of a US government bid. And they said, hey, we need this off-road vehicle to go into combat and, you know, kill the Nazis and kill the Japs and all that good stuff. And then the the Willys Jeep was the one that won the bid. And other motor companies were given the blueprints for that so they could produce it. And as far as I know, the original manufacturer was never reimbursed for the fact that other companies were getting paid to build off their blueprints because the existential threat to the US of, of both the Japanese imperial family and Nazis uh, the access powers was seen as such a massive issue that the government said, oh, yeah, we don't really care about profits. So I just thought it was a, an interesting historical look on use of IP. Yeah, no, because uh, when I when I talked this over with Maddie, I, I kind of, one of the things that popped into my head was the same thing. If you create a precedent, there obviously always is one, which you just pointed out, but also it, it can potentially tie into national security and, and the line going forward, right? So it, with that angle, Julio, do you see sort of a similar thing with what Ben's saying? Or do you feel like, hey, look, we're in uh, unusual times worldwide. We should probably facilitate access to this to get everything as back to normal as we possibly can. I mean, I, I think that is, can be a step in the right direction. However, there can be issues where, and we've seen this where, you know, cutting corners and, and doing things not the normal way uh, can lead to just kind of just corruption. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something as simple with you know, the lockdown orders and, and where it's just arbitrary and it doesn't really seem to be backed by science. Um, so I think, I think that that's a good argument for it. It's like, hey, yeah, we need to get this out as soon as possible to, this, to the whole world so that we can, yeah, get back to normal. Um, but I, I, you would also have to see, okay, well, what are some of the unattended unintended side effects of that and what could that lead to further use in the future and it doesn't even have to be right away it could be later on so mm-hmm. i think that my, my, my initial my initial impression is like yeah we should probably get this out as soon as possible or else then because the longer this drags on i mean the more adverse effects of it are going to continue right and so but uh, you always like you also have to look at it from from the other side of where okay well where, where could this also lead it down to? So I've, I'd have a couple of follow-on questions, I guess, for this particular case, in which is Operation Warp Speed, how much funding has been funneled into both of those big pharmaceutical companies that's got them to where they are now? So Well, Moderna was the only is... one to take funding. Pfizer didn't. Okay. Yeah. So in, in that case, then, whoever, whichever governments have paid in to that research, where, where does the line draw in terms of IP ownership? I mean, you know what it's like. You work for the, for the government. If you have a great idea at work, then you probably want to keep that to yourself until you retire and then develop it yourself because otherwise the government's going to take it from you. So, so there, there, would, there would be an argument for the fact that whichever governments have paid in for that research get to decide whether they're going to share the IP or not. 
Yeah. So what I could find real quickly is that, so it was 10 billion was put into it through supplemental funding, including the CARES Act. So. Which is a decent, not a lot of money. chunk of change. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, it is, but for us, it's not, but for other countries, I can see where you're coming from. So, and, and, and there's a thing that, I mean, the other parallel you could use for World War II for this, this time is the Lend Lease Act. If they're that worried about having their IP robbed, you know, I don't think the UK government paid back the US government until the 90s for World War II in terms of, you know, they bought tanks and planes and machine guns and motorcycles and stuff. They were still paying that debt off 40 years after the end of World War II. So there are other options to, in, in terms of, no, we're not giving the IP or you yeah, have it for free. Mm. So I, I think there just needs to be, you know, with a hedge towards getting the vaccine out so the, the world economy can regrow. Yeah. Because I feel like you're arguing over pennies, you know, you're pinching pennies that cost you a dollar in a year's time because if yeah. South Africa or another, you know, third world countries aren't reopened, their economies are shut down, then that has an impact on the, the, the rest of the globe as, as well as, you know, a big pharmaceutical company not having a, a trillion dollar profit margin. It's only, you know, a hundred billion or whatever the case may be. I think the U S had to pour in, um, millions of dollars in the beginning in order to get companies to move, you know, to get the private industry to start producing things. that's not easy. You know, you had, I think some companies producing stuff they'd never produced before, like swabs or ventilators. I think we had vehicle companies, yeah, you know, Tesla, Austin, Tesla yeah. and like Ford and, you know, just mm -hmm. making these ventilators and they had to reconfigure and, and, I remember there was kind of a, a, a delay like uh, in the beginning because there was no profit motive um, there. Mm -hmm. And so the government had to, you know, had to um, invoke the Defense Protection Act, get this going. But I think, uh, you know, I think everyone does need to have the vaccine because, you know, we're so globally connected, you know, to, um, uh, I mean, that's just a reality. So unless you lock down travel from one place to the other, you know, you'll, you have lots of people coming to the U.S. And after the vaccine, we do need to, you know, apparently reach a level of herd immunity. So you can't have that if you have, you know, people from, you know, India who aren't vaccinated and they come to the U.S. and, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe perhaps the, vac the, the virus is... Um, you know, changing and they come and reinfect everyone, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll have to create more vaccines. I, I maybe see, we'll isn't that though, kind of like where we already are with the flu, for example, like, yes, it's, it's, it's changed <laughs> every year. It's different. Forever. <laughs> yeah. So that's why like at some point we need to realize, you know, the cost versus the, the effect here, is it, is it worth this perpetual level of, of fear and just you know, everybody shelter and wear a mask and don't go anywhere. Like you, can, this is not sustainable for something that I'm sorry, arguably is, it's just not that deadly. You know, the um, difference is the flu has a vaccine already. Yeah, and but we still got to get it every year. We true, still get that. People still die 60, from it. There's 64 strains of influenza and, and every year you can only get four. And those four strains that they put in the jab that they give you for your flu vaccine are based off of the flu season for the Southern Hemisphere's winter. So it's still, a, it's still a stab in the dark. And some people, you know, are more resilient than others. But if people weren't getting influenza vaccines every year, then the death rate from influenza would be a lot higher. I mean, and the, the data is there from the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. There was no vaccine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, millions of people died. So you know, that the data is there to support how important it is to have widespread vaccination programs. Another good one is polio and smallpox. They're almost completely eradicated, but as a result of current challenges, a lot of those immunisation programs have dropped off and you're starting to see spikes again in, um, in diseases that were thought to almost be completely controlled. Well, see, and I'm okay with that. And Julio, this is what I, I wanted to lead into is because if that's what it's going to be fine, if this is going to be just the, the, the next thing that we have to get annual vaccinations for or boosters or whatever, great. But then Dr. Fauci says, you know, that doesn't mean we can get rid of these, these protective countermeasures we've been doing. So what does that mean? 
Right. And I mean, and that's, that's where I'm drawing the line because it's like, look, don't tell me this is going to solve everything, but yet we still got to walk around like we got fucking Ebola everywhere. Right. Because, and, and I mean, when this all started out, it started out as 15 days to slow the spread. And everyone's like, OK, like, let's do that. And then it just kind of dragged on and on. And then it went to, well, we can't do anything until we get a vaccination. And then and right now we have Fauci saying, well, you know, it's not this doesn't mean it's the end of mass. It's not the end of social distancing. And so they keep moving the goalposts. And that's mm -hmm. why people are fed up with him. And that's why people are just kind of fed up with it in general, because it's like they're not they're not being straight with us. And, and I get it. Things change. Yeah, I, you know, I can understand yeah. what, what. But when when we're what month eight? Yeah. Since it, March, not, yeah, yeah, and, and you know it, the and like I said, the, the goalposts keep changing on when we're supposed to get back to normal. That's a football post. reference, Ben. I know you love it. American football reference. Go ahead, Tulio. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, and so, but and so that's why it, it, it erodes trust when 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 you see that happen. And then on top of that, you then have, I mean, now we just have these recent scandals where. Uh, you know, hearing being here in California, you had Governor Newsom <laughs> going to a fancy dinner party with not just right, lobbyists right down the street, right? Not just lobbyists, but like the the state's leading doctors. That's yeah, supposed to be. yeah, right. Yeah. And so it's just like, okay, well, it's like so either it's either it's we need vaccines to get back to normal, or it's actually not as bad as you guys are claiming it to be, and mm -hmm. it can't have both ways. So that yeah. that just erodes the trust that's needed to make those sacrifices which people already have and you, right. and it's you, people are still struggling to this day and, and yeah. like i said los angeles and california are implementing new restrictions in other states as, as well and so it's just kind of a kick in the nuts to just see this over and over again and then to say well vaccine's no longer going to be the end-all be-all it's just like okay well then what is it what is what is the end yeah and christina real quick because we've gone almost 34 minutes without a single f-bomb so i'm going to need you to try and mix one in in your response please good well depending on um you know what we're talking about but i mean the gavin knew something i'm wondering uh, i'm a native californian right i mean and it's down the street from you how yeah. did you feel when you he lied he said oh it's an outdoor party and then nope. there's <laughs> Wait, a politician lied? Oh no, this is my surprise face. <laughs> These are supposed to be our moral betters, you know, yep. who are telling us what to do and how to stay safe. And I, I, I read this article, he sends his kids to a private school where the mm. kids can go in person while everyone else, like my niece, has to do virtual learning. I mean, that that's not okay. And uh, Eric knows this. I mean, I went to California uh, somewhat recently mm. and um, to take engagement photos. And I tried, I scheduled a hair appointment a week in advance, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I got there and they're like, yeah, sorry, we just had to cancel. This is the day before the photos. They said, yeah, we, we, we're going to have to cancel your photos uh, because we're only doing hair appointments outdoors and the air quality is so bad that we can't do it outdoors and i didn't wash my hair for a week in in anticipation of this uh you know, photo shoot and um so i had this like really dirty gr disgusting hair and i was gonna get my hair done you know for the photo shoot they said okay well we'll try for next morning um my photos are at three ish the appointment was at 12 noon they called they're like yeah sorry we can't do it today. The air quality is so bad. You know, meanwhile, you had like Nancy Pelosi, you know, <laughs> weeks before, I think it was before, basically defying her own rules. Uh, going hey, Nancy Pelosi said she was trapped, you know, she didn't realize, <laughs> you know, she was surprised. She was set up. She, I can't. Oh. <laughs> she was set up by the salon set owner. Up. Yep. Yeah. And she was seen maskless and she said, oh, it's because I had to wash my hair. But everyone knows, every girl knows if you go to the salon now, you know, you, you can wear the mask. They force you to wear the mask as you're getting your hair washed. It's doable. So there, there's a double standard, you know, between the elites, the political elites and the rest of us. <laughs> the rest of us. And uh, that's, that's very not cool. And especially you have 
you know, Thanksgiving coming up and drop the F bomb, Christina. Say, it, say, it, say, it, say that's <laughs> fucked up. Say it. Now, now, now there's pressure, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't see my family. Oh, and Gavin Newsom said it was, he was him and his family, but it was actually lobbyists. Yeah. Medical well, lobbyists. Well, yeah. Something like, yeah. Come on, uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's just the hypocrisy. There is no trust. You know? Yeah, and, but that's the thing with that guy. Like that guy's career going back to when he was the mayor of San Francisco. It's it's one. He's constantly in front of a camera apologizing for his mistake about something. <laughs> but people keep electing him to higher and higher offices. He's going to be fucking president one day. So I mean, whatever. Just get used to it. Um, ben, where are we at? I mean, look, rich people. <laughs> rich people are always going to do what they want because they're fucking assholes and they can get away with it. And they're all politicians. <laughs> and honestly, I, I need to keep reinforcing this anytime that I speak to people. The, the big takeaway from this entire pandemic isn't so much about, you know, left versus right or whatever the case may be. It's watch what your senators and congressmen did during the pandemic. Fucking nothing. That's what they did. They fucking hid in their houses and got paid and made poor people fucking go and pack shelves at Walmart. So that's the issue for me here is A, the hypocrisy of rich pricks or like I can go and have a garden party or I can get all these people in the White House and not wear a mask or whatever. Whereas, hey, you want to go to work, you've got to have a mask and you've got to do all these other things. It's, that, that's the key thing that people need to remember next time they get to vote is where were, where were you when I needed some assistance to get through the fact that local businesses um, were shut down because of this pandemic. So. Fair point. All right, Julio, wrap it up, bro. What you got? Let's get us out of here. Yeah, no, uh, I, as much as I want to feel bad uh, for business owners and I do, don't get me wrong, but I mean, Ben, ben is really actually correct because I mean, when this is what happens when you vote Democrat, well, yeah, vote, vote Democrat for, you're going to have the, you know, these, these two different response. I mean, you, you compare and contrast how, you know, California and New York have handled it as opposed to in Michigan, as opposed to South Dakota, Texas. Um, and, and they're very different and, and people are uh, happy or they're happier with, what some of the steps that they didn't take in places like Texas and South Dakota. And I know that they're different population wise and culture wise, but you get what you vote for. And, 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 you know, it, in more than anything that has, sorry, I have to bring this back to riots because that, that's my bread and butter. But, <laughs> no, but, it, but like, not only have we seen the response with coronavirus and, and the lockdowns, but also when push came to shove with rioting mobs. Yeah, right. It was fine. It was long as and, it was. And, and so it, it was uh, it was a double whammy for, for people where if they are already locked down and really restrictive, and then now all of a sudden the police or the National Guard, you know, can't get there in time and now your business is gone completely. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what happened really in Kenosha. And mm -hmm. I it's that city is just it's going to take years to fully recover from that. And that's a city of like a hundred thousand people, give or take. And so you get what you vote for. Um, you know, like I said, I want to get back to normal. You know, I, th I, th I think, I think that's definitely doable. Um, and it's, it's about what, what can be allowed to, and I'm not trying to downplay, downplay the virus. I, I think it is something that needs to be taken into consideration seriously, but we have, even even sans vaccine, we have effective treatments because we now know so much about the virus than we did back in March. And so there, there's more effective treatment plans for it. And that's why hospitalizations uh, were down for a bit. And you know, death, the death rate is in places like New York is a night and day difference. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that we can definitely move forward with it. And, you know, vaccine, obviously a step in the right direction, but even even without it today, I think we can make responsible steps forward now of course that being said you have <laughs> the, the joe biden uh, street celebrations <laughs> and all of a sudden you see you know, all these spikes <laughs> in all these cities it's just like well okay that that's that's what happens and 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 as i said before so if, if you're fine if you were fine with that 
and you weren't going to say a word about it, then I can spend Thanksgiving with my family. And that's what I'm going to do. Same. Well, not my family, but a close gathering. Of, of friends. It's, not, it's not just blue states. I mean, Texas had some good spikes for folks and they went out celebrating Biden's win. So El Paso got locked down again because their hospitalization rate jumped through the roof. So El Paso's got a, a, a geographical challenge. Well, I well just really quick on that, and this, <laughs> this, this is actually something that uh, I was on a conference call with the uh, acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection, and he, and he was talking just, about, just flexing there. Look, look at the who was on the phone with. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> well, well, no, well, because he was talking about how well, you know we're seeing a rise again in illegal immigration crossings and and attempted crossings. Um, you know, they're not socially distant when they're <laughs> when they're doing that. They're they're traveling hundreds of miles and going through all this during the middle of a pandemic. And so um, he didn't directly say it, but like, it, it's not hard to assume that, you know, maybe the, the spikes in those border cities like El Paso are partially due to illegal immigrants coming across the border. And, and so it, that's why, that's why it's interesting where, cause all of a sudden, yeah, you see El Paso seeing this massive spike and it's like, you have to think about, the, the environment that it's in and you know it's it is a border town and so yeah. that i'm not saying and, and, and not, people are just getting fed up with it wanting to go out and drink and you know well, yeah, not yeah. wear a mask like, properly and all that there, so, yeah there's that too so i'm not i'm not saying illegal immigrants are the solely to blame but that's something that you have to factor into consideration when they, they're encountered they it was they encountered 69,000 69,000 uh Ooh. illegal immigrants in just the month of october C, cbb did and like I said, like they, they put out all these pictures showing them where they're crammed in cars or they're crammed in safe houses and they don't usually have masks. And so then you have border agents that have to expose themselves to that. And then uh, I think if, today, I think 14 uh, CPB employees have died because of the coronavirus. And, and most of those were from border. Uh, but to be fair, uh, most of the people I see in Walmart and Lowe's around where I live aren't wearing masks either. And, but they can afford them. They just choose not to wear them because it's infringing on their their God given right and liberty. So there's there's also that aspect of that too. Absolutely, I'm not I'm not like I said. I'm not, I'm not saying illegal immigrants are the sole factor, but it, that's something you have to take into consideration when you uh, look at some of those border towns. True, and I, I'm just trying to present both sides of the coin. So that right, we a, but this is what I don't a, get. A, a balanced maybe discussion. You can, maybe you can help me with this one. And I know it's going to sound sarcastic because a lot of it is, but how come I have to wear a mask when I go into some place, restaurant, for example, but as soon as I sit down, I can take it off. It, does, does it, know so, it, does, does it, it won't, it won't touch me if I'm sitting down. Because maybe so you're the, the, viewing the science, you walk through, you know. The science, <laughs> so as the science, is, as the science has progressed, as we've known more about it, they're realizing more and more that, it's not from contact, it's not touch, it's all, it's, it's vapor droplets. So you're walking through the hot zone um, to get to your table. And, and then once you're there, you're in theoretically clean air because the, the restaurant or the bar should be providing that, um, the right distance so that those vapor droplets aren't going to travel to your table. And then your server is wearing a mask. So the most likely person to infect you during your dining experience is probably going to be the person serving your drinks and your meal. So provided that everyone else in the kitchen who's making the drinks and all the rest of it isn't coughing into your food and drink, then it is a somewhat safe and bright. But you can see now that there's not only states in the US, but also countries in Europe who are starting to go back to no more in-person dining because there was an uptick in cases. Because it, all it takes is for someone it's because to because Newsom got caught. That's why. Because if you wear your mask like this <laughs> and you and you're dick nosing it, then guess what? You can still get particles come out of your nostrils. It's it's amazing how the respiratory system works. So dick if nosing. people dick nosing, <laughs> then then COVID's going to get out. But if you spread people out enough, and then the staff are wearing masks, and you're wearing it while you're moving around, going to the bathroom, going to pay then the likelihood of you contracting it drops exponentially. So if you, if you look at the, there's some infographics out saying, you know, if both people wear a mask and it's like 90% effective, if the person who's infected wears a mask, 
you know, it's 60% effective. If no one wears a mask, then, you know, you're, you're in hot water. Um, so masks do work if people wear them properly. You know, so we, 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 had, we had a dude said. living in this house um, who got guys- COVID for the sec- second time. He's, he's a lucky dude. First guy in North Carolina to get COVID for a second time. Famous for And dur- during his infectious period, three other humans lived in the house and none of us got, caught it caught it, because well, we, we all wore masks in common spaces and he wore a mask for the 10 days that he was contagious and we made sure we you know ran the dishwasher extra hot and all those things. So basic precautions, you know, we cracked the windows more to get more airflow, that kind of stuff meant that a guy who was a two-time winner of the COVID Olympics didn't give it to us. You should have so burned I, him. I'm, you I'm, just I'm burned standing. Him. I can't. The army owns him. I'd have to tell him. Oh, never mind. Forms, that makes sense. All right. You know, and, and the Sith would be all over me wanting his gear back. And yeah, it's a nightmare. Too much it, you're right. All right. So you did the right thing. You let him live twice. And no, there, there was another great example of, of Mark's effectiveness. There was a barber shop somewhere. I want to say it was in New York someplace. The, the two barbers both had COVID. Uh, they cut 180 odd people's hair in the couple of days before they realized they were sick. And because they were wearing masks and their clients were wearing masks, no one got it. So, you know, a simple piece of fabric strapped across your face so that you can go out and still get a haircut or, you know, go and eat, go, go do your grocery so shopping. This is, Doesn't seem so like it's a perpetual deal. is what you're saying, right? This is just till the end no, of time. No. <laughs> no, nope, but you know, ho- hopefully people realize they can also do things like drop down the rate of influenza when it comes to flu season next year as well. So once all the mask drops off because of COVID, hopefully people what go, about hey, all I'm these going- mask manufacturers? They're going to go out of business and now they're going to need a bailout. We have to, come on. It, it just, it's, it, per, it's a it, cycle. It just keeps going. Maybe they, maybe they can borrow some money off the airlines. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I don't know. Christina, you got anything? I mean, I, I've got, I'm all out of eggnog. I mean, <laughs> I started enough with that today. You're on bird. I don't know what Ben's got. Incredible. Uranium. Yeah, uranium. Yeah. Just uranium again. Glass. Yeah. <clears throat> Julio's not old enough to drink. So. Old enough to be with your mom though. Hey, oh, the oh, first mom joke. Took <laughs> 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 all right. We're going to get out of here. We're going to not do this next week because it is Thanksgiving. And I hope in all seriousness that you get to spend it with your family, your friends, someone that wants to actually be around you. And if you, if you can't, then, Hey, my door will be open. Cause I'm just going to, I'm fuck it. My door will be open. So if you need anything, come on by Gavin Newsom, you can't, um, but that's what I hope everyone does. Spend some time with the family, friends. Have banter. Have nice, peaceful discussions. We'll probably try and come back in two weeks. Remember, you may not think like us, but you probably think like one of us. There will be banter. 